Hey, welcome to this week's video. You know, picture this, you're leaving for a vacation, looking forward to getting away a bit from your business, when suddenly the thought comes to your mind, can I actually write off some of this vacation costs? Well, at this point you're driving away, the answer probably is no, but had you consulted your superhero accountant, the answer could have probably been yes. So in this video, I'll walk you through the travel deduction rules and how you could possibly deduct some of your vacation costs. You'll walk away with some ideas to have Uncle Sam pay for some of your vacation and put some cash in your pocket to help pay for that vacation. So let's get to work. So first, you must actually leave your home. That sounds obvious, but generally that's at least 100 miles away from your home and business and it's normally beyond the general vicinity of the city of where you live. Your tax home is generally where you live with your family, but that's not always the case. Let's say that you live with your family in Chicago, but you work up in Milwaukee during the week, while well, your tax home or your business may be in Milwaukee. Also, the trip should be less than one year, and traveling just because you can work from anywhere doesn't count, meaning you can't decide that, hey, I'd like to work from Thailand and deduct that trip without some legitimate business activity. Also, the trip must mostly relate to business, meaning that at least 51% or more of the time spent should be on business unless you travel abroad, which in that case, it's 25% or more. And if it's less than 25%, you may be able to prorate some of the expenses as well. Now, travel days count as business days, and other business days depend on what is a typical working day in the area that you work in. So if you work eight hours, then you have to work at least four hours and one minute in order for that to be considered a business day. In addition, the trip must be ordinary and necessary, which basically means that the business activities should make sense given the industry that you're in and be necessary for the business. You know, for me, it would be attending a tax seminar or for a real estate investor, maybe meeting with potential sellers of properties. Also, if a choice between two locations, generally the closer location would be considered necessary over a further location. So if your conference is in your hometown of say Los Angeles where you live, and but there's also a conference that's in Jamaica, well, the Los Angeles one would make more sense if, if all things being equal, they're the same. In addition, the business activity should be planned in advance, meaning you should schedule and plan activities once you get to the destination, including, for example, setting up appointments or meetings or attending a conference. So what costs are actually deductible? Well, travel to and from the location counts and any type of transportation works along with related fees such as baggage fees and shuttle services. You could even take your vehicle and deduct the actual cost or the cost per mile based on the IRS mileage rate. However, stops along the way may not be considered a normal route to take for your destination, and in those cases, that would not be considered deductible. So let's say if you fly from Washington, D.C. to the Bahamas, and then you go to your conference in Montreal, you would use what the cost would be if you flew from Washington directly to Montreal or in a normal course of flying from Washington to Montreal. Now, lodging costs include hotels, Airbnb, and even renting a room from family if you're staying with family. Lodging costs include hotels, Airbnb, and even renting a room from family if you plan to stay with family. But such costs are deductible for only the related business days. However, a trick is if on a Friday is a business day and you're required to conduct business on the following Monday, the weekend would then count as two business days, even if you don't do any business over the weekend. Now, costs to sustain life on business days are deductible, which include meals, which are 100% deductible for 2021 and 2022, if purchased from an eat-in restaurant, even if you purchase using Uber Eats 
All other meals, including groceries, are 50% deductible. Also, if you meet a client on a non-business day, you could deduct the business meal on that day. Other costs that are deductible on business days are essential costs. That would include like Wi-Fi, dry cleaning, office printing, etc. Now keep in mind that costs can't be lavish, so that $6,000 hamburger would most likely be denied. Further, there are rules for receipts and proof required for deductibility that you should keep in mind. And I'll link a video that I did that shows just how to do that. Just keep in mind that when you cross over from business to vacation, costs incurred become non-deductible. But what about traveling with friends and family? You know, in general, cost of bringing family or friends is considered personal unless they are partners in your business. But they can use the tag-along rules, meaning that the lodging cost you paid for yourself and shared with your family is deductible unless you paid extra costs for the room. So let's say that you rented a double room uh, when you would normally just need a single room and you paid $300 for the extra space, but it normally would cost you $200. You could deduct that $200 as an expense. Same thing if you rented a car. You want to make sure that they can tag along in using the car and that you would normally you know, purchase or use or rent that car during your stay for your vacation. So some key takeaways. You don't remember business activities are away from home and are generally planned in advance and are normally about 100 miles away from your tax home. Most, mostly the activities that you should do related to the trip should be business related, but remember the rules of the U.S. versus abroad, meaning 51% has or more relates to business and abroad just needs to be 25% or more. Also, make sure you separate the business and personal expenses and friends and family can tag along if really no extra costs. The big thing though is keep proof of expenses, the business purpose and activities. And that would include the amount of the expenditure, such as the transportation, the lodging, and the meals, the time of your departure and return, the number of days that relate to business, the place that you went, and the business purpose. And again, I will link a video in the show notes that I did on the receipts. So that's it for this week's video. If you got any value out of it, it'd be great if you hit that thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, it'd be awesome to have you as a subscriber. Until next time, I'll catch you on the next one.